Today we live in a world of despair and uncertainty. If you take a look at the world around us, we find many situations which may not be ideal. Let's take a look at some of these for example. We see that the world is still suffering from the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. We have the global economic slowdown. Apart from that, there is also the ever widening gap between the rich and the poor. You also have the rise of the right-wing political parties. And there are issues such as climate change and of late the war between Russia and Ukraine. When we look at all this, we may have a question that would be lingering in our minds. Why does evil exist in the world? Why doesn't the good crush evil once and for all? Well, if you take a look at this question in a more detailed manner, we see that today's gospel passage offers us quite a detailed analysis of why we find evil coexisting with good in the world. In today's parable of the weeds, we read how the plants and the weeds are allowed to grow together. And then we see when the day of judgment comes, there is the separation that takes place. The weeds are burnt, whereas the grains are then stored in the barn. Now, when we read today's gospel passage, we find Jesus saying the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom. What does Jesus mean by this? And how does today's gospel passage teach us about the need for discerning what is good and what is bad? Well, let's find that out during today's episode of Tea Time with the Word. But before we can begin our reflection, let us take a look at the readings for Tuesday in the 17th week of Ordinary Time. Today's first reading is from the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 14, verses 17 to 22. And the gospel is from the gospel of Matthew, chapter 13, verses 36 to 43. Now, we see that today's gospel passage is indeed something that gives us a lot of analysis about the whole question of evil coexisting with the good. But when we look at today's first reading, we see that Jeremiah, on behalf of the people, pleads with God. But before that, he himself is overwhelmed at the judgment that is to come upon the people. And in a way here, we see that this tends to be something that is self-inflicted by the people, despite continuous attempts by the Lord to convince the people to repent and change their ways, we see that the people were not willing to do so. And as a result of this, what happens is that the people have to face the consequences. And here we see Jeremiah pleads with the Lord that it is only the Lord who can make all things possible. If there is no rain, the idols can't make it rain. Neither can the heavens without the word of the Lord. And here, even in our own lives, we see that when we have faith and trust in the Lord, everything seems to go according to plan. Everything seems to function properly. And that is why sometimes we need to place our faith and trust in the Lord. There are times wherein we feel that we ourselves can manage everything. And that is where sometimes we are misled by the world. That is why it is very important to discern between the good elements and the bad elements in the world today. And here the process of discernment is very, very important. But when we look at today's gospel passage, here we see that it presents the explanation 
that Jesus gives to his disciples regarding the parable of the good seed and the weeds. Now here we see that the disciples came to Jesus and asked Jesus to give them an explanation of what he had just said. Now some of the experts think that the, this explanation that Jesus gives to his disciple is not the one that Jesus gave but it is the community's interpretation of the passage. And this is possible and quite probable because when we look at a parable by its own nature it is supposed to require the involvement and the participation of the people who listen to it. Just as the plant is already contained in the seed, similarly the explanation of the parable is always contained in the parable itself. And here we see that this is precisely the objective that Jesus wanted the community to achieve. Because it is when they discuss and talk about the parable, they come up with new interpretations. And these interpretations help them to understand things at a much personal level. And that is something which really remains in their hearts and they are able to practice it. That is why when something is told with force, there is some kind of tension or some kind of restriction. We don't always want to follow it. But when something comes from within, automatically we will find the time and the motivation to put it into practice. This is exactly what a parable is meant to achieve. Then we are also told that Jesus gives the explanation to the disciples and he tries to explain to them exactly what the parable is all about. He tells them that the sower is God and the good seeds are the people who follow the words and who follow the gospel values. Whereas the one who sows weeds is the evil one. And here we see that Jesus continues to teach his disciples. We also need to know that at that time there was no television and people spent long winter evenings together. And what would they do? They would speak about facts and about events of life. And on these occasions Jesus completed the teaching and the formation of his disciples. And here we see that Jesus clearly explains each and every element of the parable. He responds by taking these elements and giving them significance. The field is the world. The good seed are the members of the kingdom. The weeds are the members of the evil one. The enemy is of course the evil one or the devil and the harvest is the end of time and the reapers are the angels. And when we reread the parable keeping in mind these six elements, what do we find? We basically see that the story assumes a completely new and different sense and it is possible to attain the objective that Jesus had in mind when he told his disciples the parable of the weeds and of the good seed. In this way, some think that the parable should be understood as an allegory and not as a parable properly so called. Now with the explanation that Jesus gives, we can reread the parable and find its real significance. So just as the weed is gathered and burnt into the fire, so it will be for those who do not follow the word of God, for those who go contrary to the will of the Father. And therefore we see that it is the destiny of the weed to be sent into the furnace. And here what does Jesus want to tell us? Jesus wants us to discern between what is good and what is bad. Sometimes we may wonder, why does evil coexist with the good? Can't evil be eliminated once and for all? Well, we see here the whole problem or the whole question 
of free will comes into existence. One thing we need to know for sure that God does not force anything on us. We are given a choice for everything. Whatever decision we take in life, it has a choice. And therefore, sometimes we may complain about certain things or the other. But at the back of the mind, we sometimes forget that it is we ourselves who have chosen this. And that is why one of the reasons for good and evil existing is that we have the choice to choose good or evil. And whatever the consequences we face are dependent on our choices. We see that when we are forced to do something, we don't do it wholeheartedly. We do it with a cranky face or sometimes we just do it for the sake of doing. Now God does not want to force anything on us. He leaves us free to choose and to take decisions, hoping that we will take the right decisions. And that is why the discernment which St. Ignatius gives is very important. And if we put this into practice, we ourselves will be able to notice the inner movements that are there within us. And this will help us in order to find out what exactly is good and what exactly is bad. And keeping this free choice in mind, we can take a decision of whether something is good for us or something is bad for us. Just as the parable says that it is only at the end of time that the weeds are separated from the grain. Similarly, it is only when we face the consequences that we come to know whether our decision was right or wrong. So as we reflect on the readings of the day, let us ask the Lord for this grace that we may be able to discern well what is right and what is wrong. And ultimately, we may be like the good seed that bears good fruit so that we too may be kept in the barn, kept in the kingdom of God at the time of the final judgment. And we also pray for the grace that we may place our faith and trust in the Lord, putting everything into his hands, surrendering everything to him so that he may lead us and guide us in this journey of life. Amen.